Joining me now is David Gartenstein Ross. He's a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. He's also an adjunct professor in Georgetown University's Security Studies program. So, Theresa May uh, raising the threat level to critical the first time in a decade. Um, and here we are again, another mass attack in Europe. Why do they keep happening? That's an excellent question. Um, yeah, there, there are multiple reasons, but uh, if you look at the past several years, go back five years, and the conventional wisdom was that the Arab Spring was going to sweep jihadism away. Instead, you had the opposite happen. Um, you had not only did Libya never get put back together, but uh, Syria, of course, became uh, this hotbed of jihadism, ISIS establishing what they call a caliphate there, which has helped to galvanize people continent-wide. You have ISIS, um, you have old al-Qaeda, but now ISIS recruiting networks uh, networks uh, that, that um, are centered on Khalid Zarqani or Sharia for Belgium. Um, you have some incitement via social media. You have waves of refugees coming in. Um, all of these help to contribute to the situation um, that you now have today, where it really, for Europe, is a nightmare scenario in terms of the pace and lethality of attacks. If you look at, at what's happened from the Paris attacks, the 130 dead onward, you have Paris, you have Brussels, the bombing at the airport and at the, the, um, and at the metro station, um, and other high-profile attacks. You have Nice, um, you have the Berlin attack, you, now you have this attack. Um, the pace and lethality indicate a new normal that Europe would not have imagined five years ago. But what is not being taken or learned from those events and built upon to prevent the next one from happening? Well, I think what we underestimated, I think that what people who misread these events underestimated is um, the ability of organizations to uh, innovate and adapt. I think there are multiple things being missed. Prison sentences are too short. If you look at a number of the uh, current recruiters and people involved in attacks like the Charlie Hebdo attack. There are this guy was known to authorities. I mean, he was on the radar. Um, what needs to happen for all of these, one of many, <laughs> what needs to happen for all of these people that are on the radar, whether they're in the UK or France or Brussels or Germany, to be caught before they carry out the next one? The problem is that there's too many people on the radar. Right, like authorities uh, can't arrest people until, uh, like a lot of them are in what you'd call the pre-criminal phase. That is, they're known as militants, they're known as radicals, but they haven't yet committed a crime, so there's not cause to arrest them and actually give them a sentence. Um, th it seems as though, um, in this case, uh, the bomber was in the pre-criminal phase. Uh, and you know, the, the, the sheer numbers are striking. If you go back around the time of the uh, 2005 attacks, what known as the 7-7 attacks. Um, you had the head then of MI5, uh, the uh, domestic intelligence agency in Britain, uh, talk about the sheer numbers of people who supported the 7-7 attacks. And the numbers then were striking. What you have now, in contrast to 2005, is not only do you have you know, a wellspring of support for jihadism and for this kind of outlook, but you also have a much more rapid pace of mobilization. It's become normalized. And that's a very hard situation to deal with. It's a, a Pandora's box that has been opened. At some point, perhaps it can be closed, not for the foreseeable future. And I think one of our concerns in America should be that something like this does not become the new normal here as well. So about 30 seconds left. What you're saying is uh, there could be another imminent attack. Don't get used to the fact that there's a, a pause in peace or whatever. There's something going, it'll happen, it'll happen again. Since November 2015, there just has not been a pause. The pace has been relentless. There are so many attacks um, that, you know, small scale attacks, priests getting their throat slits during services and the like, that it's hard to keep track of them all, even for someone who specializes in this area. No answer yet, David Gartenstein-Ross. Thank you for your time. We always appreciate it.